met Georgia. I don't know how we met, but we met. It was a long time. It was ago. a little long. <laughs> Galaxy <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> anyway, Georgia, it was instrumental on. Um, I've been a regular on a news, uh, uh, broadcast news, Ebro, and it's been really, it's been great for me and my business. So. I was going to turn that over to you, Georgia. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. I'm very excited about being here today. My name is Georgia Timoney. I am a news producer. I am also a producer for public TV as well. So what I want to do first is congratulate all of you for being here. You guys rock. Your commitment, your passion to your product, that's the kind of thing that I need to hear or see in talking with you, and that's what gets you on TV. But first of all, I think you should give yourself a round of applause. You can blood, the sweat, and tears. Part of the reason I met Melissa was I was thinking about a product. And I had done some research. I was on the web. I found her. I called her. I'm like, oh my god, this woman has so much information. <laughs> and then you started me on my path, right, which is slowly chugging along. But, uh, so that's why I have so much respect for all of you. Uh, what you need to know, uh, the shows that I work for. I work for uh, One on One with Steve Adubato. I've been working with him for 10 years, 11 years, I'm on. Uh, I work on the show Life and Living with Joanna Gaggis, which is also on PBS. So those are shows that air on WNET, they, uh, which is Channel 13 in New York. They bump over to WLIW, WLIW World. Uh, NJTV for here. I also work on the news program where Melissa is a fabulous regular. It's called Every Today. It shoots in Somerset, New Jersey, but it is live, it is morning, and it is international. It doesn't air in New Jersey. It airs on the RCN network. So that means it goes to New York, it goes to Philly, it goes to Washington, D.C., it goes to Boston. It broadcasts live in Turkey. Am I making you crazy? But no, you're doing a great okay. job. <laughs> uh, by, uh, <laughs> uh, live in Turkey. But it also hits every country in sub-Saharan Africa. In addition to that, it's on satellite throughout the globe. So we're talking big exposure. A little bit of time, six-minute interview, one-on-one. -on -one. And those are the kind of interviews that are the most important ones. Okay? Six minutes is like, oh, no, God short amount of time. That is a huge amount of time in TV, TV land. TV land is usually like a 20 second, a 30 second. Six minutes is a long time. And the major things you need to know are you need to be prepared. Before you get in contact with me, you have to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and know your pitch inside and out. <coughs> I make a decision within the first 15 to 30 seconds if I'm going to book you. And why is that? Can I use this word real quick? And then I'll, I'll t I'm sorry, I'm like, is that okay? <laughs> Can I just do it real quick? Your log line is what you should know by heart. And that is your one sentence that describes what your product is. It is very similar to if you're doing a movie pitch. What is the log line for Jaws? Has anybody seen Jaws? Of course. Everybody's seen Jaws. It's the shark that eats you, which is why you're afraid to go into the water and the beach now since 1978. Right? True. True. The log line for Jaws is as follows. A giant shark terrorizes a sea sword resort community. Write that down. A giant shark terrorizes a seaside community. I'm going to say it one more time. Because the third time's a charm. A giant shark terrorizes a seaside community. It is no, it is going to, will be the nothing. Gets right to the damn point and tells me what the thing is. That's what I need to know. We're all busy. I need to know in one sense, and no comments, no passive verbs, is being, is going, no, it terrorizes. Hopefully your product doesn't terrorize. Unless you want to make it terrorize people. Do you see what I mean? You see the difference? Then you can follow up with a personal line or two and tell me three reasons why I should care. Your log line. 
something personal because I need to know your passion. I have to have that read on camera. You've seen people that interview and I'm sitting here like this. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? That's not interesting. Click goes over to the next channel. I need people that are dynamic, that are passionate, and I can hear that or I can read that in an email and they have an attachment or a link that they send to me too. I'm going to give you my email address. Okay? I know. After I said that, I said, oh my god, I can't believe I just said that. Okay. <laughs> you can't take that. Okay. Look at your email. Uh, yeah. She's great, by the way. She's a it, great experience. Uh, I don't want to use that, Kathy. That's a G. G-T-I money. G Timony, G Timony one at Gmail. And this is only if your product is ready to go and you have it and you can bring it in. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is Myra Burks Davis. Myra wants to stand up. Uh, Myra. I call Myra my social media guru. Wow. She's awesome. Thank you. She's been awesome in helping me and Own Adventures get the word out virtually, socially. Mm -hmm. And she's quick too. I mean, if I post something, man, it's retweeted. It's, it's like out there. So um, we were introduced by a mutual friend, and that's where great networking comes into place. So, Myra, why don't you just a couple minutes or a minute or something about yourself? I just got to say, at first, I was like, oh, God, I got that to do that. But Georgia actually set it up very nicely because um, my background, uh, very similar, and through the years I've actually worked with Georgia on some things, uh, working in public relations and marketing, and kind of helping people craft what your message is. Very often, and every one of you probably has a very, very special message, there's something very important about whatever it is that you're doing, but you may have some challenges in figuring out how do I get this information to the right audience. Um, Someone said in one of their pitches, their business pitches, that they had an opportunity to do Dr. Oz, but they didn't feel that they had um, inventory for it. I say a situation like that, you figure out how to get the inventory. <laughs> <laughs> because the, the magnitude of being able to do something like that on um, a stage that large can make huge differences. I'll share a quick story with you. Some of you may have heard it last time. Uh, I used to work for an organization that recovered organs and tissue for transplant surgery and did this type of work for them. Um, there was a story that was done with ESPN about a mascot who had been killed in a car accident here in New Jersey. He was the mascot for UNC, Chapel Hill basketball team. His organs were recovered here in New Jersey. All the people who received them were New Jersey residents. And so ESPN was launching a new show, E60. They wanted to know if they could do an exclusive on this particular story. Um, and at that time, a lot of the protocol was, don't even talk to this family until it's a year out. Well, a year later, it's history. It's not news. And so you, you, you have to not be afraid of testing some protocols and going outside your comfort zone and seizing the opportunity. As a result of that opportunity, I'd like to say, like I said last time, that my, my public relations prowess got me on Oprah. It wasn't the story got us on Oprah. She saw it on ESPN. Her producers called. We were there. Dr. Oz was interested in doing that story. That's when he was still um, just a segment on her show. 50,000 people registered the day it aired wow. online to be working donors. Fantastic. As a result of that. <laughs> so whatever they asked for, I tried to do a pretzel flip to figure it out to get there. The last thing I wanted to do was walk away from that opportunity. So I would say to you, with your sham product, figure it out. You know, seize the opportunity. News is news when it's happening. And so whatever you're doing with your products, you want to ensure that you're able to bring that one trend with what's, what's, what's trending in the news cycle. That's how you get it interesting. Someone else spoke about, um, oh, I'm not picking on you, but you were very interesting. And I was late <laughs> for some of the other ones. Um, <coughs> Your personal story is great, but I'd also like to hear, how does it affect other people? You know, not only do I want to hear that, 
someone like Georgette wants to know, that's a great story. I wonder, the first thing you start thinking is, how many other people are affected by something like this? What's the number? How big a problem is this? The breastfeeding um, tool? How many people find that to be a problem? I mean, I breastfed, and I knew who they were, so. <laughs> you know, I figured that out. But, but I, I was very interested when you were saying this. I don't want to do the pitching critiques now. But those are, those are some of the things you might want to think about as you're sitting there dying to come up and do your pitches to us from a media perspective. And a lot of the material that you did share with the angel investors will be some of the material you want the uh, reporter to know, the blogger to know. It just may be the order in which you present that. And finally, I'm really thrilled at that, Deborah, that for you being here. Um, Deborah Teschler owns Graphica, which is an advertising marketing firm out of Chester, New Jersey. And how long were you out of power? Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chester area was hit really hard. I uh, know it was. Anyway, Deborah is like top 50 woman in business. She's you know two years running, leading woman entrepreneur in New Jersey. Um, you're like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> so I'm just really excited to have Deborah here. Deborah, why don't you come on up and uh, talk a little bit about your firm? Sure. First of all, I feel like a good advertising for static art. <laughs> <laughs> so I started Graphica 26 years ago, and we're basically a traditional and direct marketing advertising agency because in today's media fragmented world, you really need to be able to use all your channels and optimize them. I think the biggest thing I would say to somebody who's gonna market their product is, it's not a one size fits all world out there. We've really developed our expertise in corporate America across a wide range of categories from utilities to telecommunications, technology, healthcare, B2B, B2C, and what you learn through that whole process is that the importance of data-driven marketing and segmentation and finding out the needs of the individual customers you're dealing with and developing relationships with them. We all know the Pareto principle that it costs five times or ten times as much to win a customer back um, or to gain a customer than it is to retain a customer. So the importance of developing relationships is key, and today's channels allow you to do that so much more cost-effectively than they did years ago. When I grew up in the golden age of advertising, you know, you had TV, radio, print, newspaper. Today, I, you can't even count the amount of channels that are out there. And it varies by segment. Are you dealing with somebody in a teenage category, <coughs> in male, female? Are they mature? Each target audience requires a different set of channels. And not everybody in the 25 to 35 is all within the same media channel alignment <coughs> that you would put them in. So capturing information from any of the marketing channels that you send out is key. The web is great because underneath it, you have the technology and the data that tracks who's coming to your site, where they're going, where they're not going through the analytics, whether it's Google or whatever analytic package you have. If you're sending out a newspaper ad, use extension numbers so that you can track what's working and what's not. Email is another innate ability to capture information as you're going out there. Social media is great because you can track that. So it's getting all that intelligence and using that intelligence to market. It's not a one size, it never was, but now it's even more fragmented than ever. So using that data and the intelligence to drive your marketing is key to that successful and long-term relationship over the life cycle of a customer. Great, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.